In this video, we will show you how to connect Awingu to your local Active Directory. After the installer has finished, you will see that port 8080 is no longer available and Awingu is just available on your standard uh, web uh, HTTP port. Uh, on the installer, uh, on the login page, we can log in with the uh, username and password we have set during the installer. Uh, domain can be uh, left uh, blank. And uh, because this is the first time we log in to, a, to an Awingu system, it will also inform me about uh, some privacy policies. So uh, to be compliant with uh, regulations like GDPR, Awingu will uh, inform me that uh, it will be kept uh, user data for uh, 13 months. Uh, after accepting, uh, I'm uh, logged into the uh, Awingu appliance as a uh, built-in administrator and I have access to three tools. Uh, system settings, that's the tool where you can do all the configuration and that we will use to link Awingu to the uh, Active Directory. Dashboard, uh, everything with auditing, and we will explain that later on. And the API docs, um, Awingu is uh, also fully configurable and uh, can also be automated through the uh, API. Uh, that's also another video that we will do uh, later on. As said, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, step, we will link Awingu to the uh, Active Directory. So uh, again, first time I'm st starting the system settings, Awingu will ask me if it's okay to send uh, anonymous usage uh, to uh, Awingu itself for uh, product development. So uh, in my case, I'm going to uh, allow this. And um, as you can see in the system settings, um, there is a, a menu called global on the, on the top right side. And over there, there is a possibility to go to uh, domain. So this is the first thing we need to do. Open the system settings, go to global domains. And uh, the first thing we will do is create a first uh, tenant uh, in Awingu. Uh, as said before, Awingu is uh, multi-tenant, which means that you can have different environments running on the same Awingu appliance. In this, uh, in this video, I'm just going to show you how to add a first tenant. Uh, but, uh, of course, if you want to do a second, a third, a uh, fourth tenant, you just need to go back to, uh, to global domains and repeat what I'm doing uh, right now. So to add uh, a first tenant or to, to connect Awingu to a first active directory, uh, I click on, uh, on the Add button and Awingu will ask me a few questions. So the, the first question it will ask me is, what's the NetBIOS name of the domain? So in, uh, in my case, my, uh, my NetBIOS name is called Comp. Um, and um, the, the second question is a, a name for this tenant. So Awingu will automatically suggest to take the same name as the, as the NetBIOS name. Actually, this is a free text format field, so you, you can call this uh, anything you, you, you like. So I'm just going to leave it on comp, but assume that you would have like um, multiple tenants later on uh, in the same domain. You could, for example, call this like uh, customer one. And then when you're adding the, the second tenant, you could call this uh, customer two. But in my case, I will just uh, keep uh, the, the suggested comp name. And then Awingu is asking for the domain, fully qualified domain name. So this is the, 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 the fully qualified domain name of the domain. So not of the Active Directory, but of the domain. So in my uh, case, this is a comp dot, uh, dot, uh, dot local. Um, next step is the host headers. Um, if you're only planning to have like one Awingu appliance, this is less uh, important. But if you plan to go to multiple uh, tenants or if you plan to do things like um, single sign-on later on or if you plan to do things like uh, reverse proxy of web applications, it's important that Awingu knows the public DNS name you're using to access uh, the Awingu appliance. So in my case, as you can see, this is uh, remoteawingu.com. Uh, so um, the host header will as actually associate this tenant with, uh, with that uh, DNS name. So if you have like multiple tenants, you need to create multiple DNS names and then you can attach each tenant to uh, its own unique name. Also notice that it's not limited to one DNS name. You can have like multiple DNS names for the same tenant. Um, Next step, uh, it's also something to do with multi-tenancy. So uh, again, if you're only planning to have like one tenant on your Awingo appliance, just leave it uh, on administrative domain. Later on, when we're going to explain uh, multi-tenancy, um, you could, for example, decide to, uh, to set this to, uh, to no. But if it's, it's, if it's only one tenant you plan to install, so if, if you only plan to have like one Awingo environment on, uh, on this appliance, then uh, just keep it uh, administrative. Uh, the next few steps are details on how Awingu can connect to your local uh, Active Directory. So in, uh, in my case, uh, my uh, Active Directory is called uh, awingu.ad.comp.local. Uh, and um, I'm going to give Awingu full access on the, on the full um, scope of the, of, the, of the domain. So uh, in this case, it's uh, dc.comp. Uh, 
uh, DC uh, local. Um, if you if you plan, for example, to to have like separate OUs per uh, per customer, you could in here say, for example, I, I'm only going to give access to OU customer one uh, comma DC comp DC uh, uh, local. So this is this is actually the the scope of which uh, Awingu has uh, has control on uh, when it comes, for example, on adding applications, users, or uh, groups. Uh, next step is is uh, rather important. So um, by default, if you connect to an Active Directory. Um, uh, over LDAP, um, um, that will not work over LDAP S. So uh, you need to enable LDAP S first on your Active Directory before you can enable it uh, over here in, uh, in Awingu. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with how to uh, enable LDAP S on, uh, on Active Directory, we have a, um, um, uh, an article in our support database on, on how to, uh, to do this. Uh, why is it important to have uh, LDAP S uh, connectivity towards your Active Directory? Of course, because then all your uh, usernames and passwords are encrypted when they when they go from the Awingo appliance to the Active Directory. But it's also, for example, needed for doing things like uh, password changes on, on Awingo or, for example, doing things like um, change password on first login and, and these kinds of, uh, of activities. Last reason why it's also very important, Microsoft has plans to... Um, to, um, to disable LDAP uh, queries to, to Active Directory and only allowing LDAP S connections. So uh, if, if you don't want uh, to, be, to, to, to hit a problem in the future, please already uh, configure it today with uh, LDAP S. Um, as said before, Awingu is fully multi-tenant. So per tenant, you can specify a DNS name that can a DNS server, sorry, that can be used in uh, in this tenant. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so for my uh, for for this tenant, uh, I'm I'm going to use the uh, Active Directory uh, DNS uh, server. Um, almost there. So just a few more things to uh, to configure. One of them is the is the bind uh, user for the domain. So this is something which is not mandatory, but but highly recommended. You will see in the in the next steps where, where we start fine tuning the uh, the Awingua configuration that from time to time we, we we can import things from Active Directory like for example uh, security groups um, application servers. So either we need to type them in or we can just query them via via LDAP. So if you specify a, a, a bind user in uh, in in Awingu, uh, that will be uh, able to uh, be to be done automatically. So um, I'm going to configure that with the service user and with uh, a password. Um, so this is a, a plain standard service account which, which exists in my Active Directory. Doesn't have to be a, 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 an administrator or anything like that. It's just a plain, uh, a plain uh, user in the uh, in the domain. Uh, the next few things are uh, are uh, um, not that important at this moment. Um, Awingo is still uh, capable of also connecting to a traditional LDAP server, so not an Active Directory, but a traditional LDAP server. So that's why we have some options to to fetch the the bind name uh, based on on different schemes. So please leave it uh, leave it as it is. Also, um, if for example you would be uh, uh, out of Europe or you don't want that privacy warning uh, during the the login phase, this is also something you can disable uh, in here. Um, if you click on add, Awingu will add the, the first tenant to the, to the domain. This will take roughly uh, 30 seconds. And then uh, once this is uh, finished, you will see that on the, on the left side of the menu, uh, some, some extra options uh, pop up and we can start configuring this tenant.